Uh, my hat's off to a great um, Robert Morris program. Coach Tool does a great job preparing his guys. Um, they had some great spurts within the game, and I thought it put us on our heels. Uh, their pressure put us on our heels and the way they approached the beginning of the game, but our guys withstood that test of time and, you know, endured their pressure, endured the amount of pressure they was putting on the basket offensively. Uh, they are a great executing team, uh, one of the top teams in their conferences, and I truly believe they'll compete to try to get into that uh, NCAA tournament. But for the most part, we tried to disrupt, um, you know, the flow of their offense, and I thought we did that with, with the amount of full-court pressure that we allowed. We took time off the shot clock, which allowed them, instead of 25 seconds, it allowed them 18 seconds to try to execute their offense. Um, you know, our guys just came out prepared to play. Um, Al Eichelberger, you know, he had a big-time game for us, and, and I truly thought he willed us to a victory. Going, you know, a kid who shoots 45% last season from the free-throw line, we challenged him to concentrate a little bit more because he's a better player than what he's been showing, and he's doing that now by knocking down free throws to go 11 for 12, and he put the team on his back tonight. I thought Craig did a great job coming off the bench uh, for us uh, and settling us down, and I thought Franklin Penn did a great job rebounding, but whenever you have an opportunity to uh, force a team into 12 turnovers by way of steals, I thought our guys did a great job of anticipating and, and, and getting the job done tonight. Coach, you mentioned the bigness. Can you talk about the positional play at the point guard? I think you said that Ethan Kentucky played the play at the point guard in the whole game. Well, in terms of our defense, I thought uh, it's always been in our playbook to play that way. We got about four or five different presses that we use. Um, our guys are doing a great job, I thought. You know, I would have to bring it out a little bit later, but, you know, I wanted to create energy, a little bit more energy than what we've been having. And I was putting too much pressure. As a head coach, I was putting too much pressure on our half-court defense, and I couldn't put a young team in that in that situation. Uh, so that's what decided or made, made me decide to put the pressure up a little bit more and play more possessions of full-court defense, especially after free throws. Uh, things like that, dead balls. But our guys, you know, no matter what it is, I can call whatever I want to call. It's them having the ability to execute on the offensive end and on the defensive end, and they've been doing that. They're in the right spots at the right time. They're getting deflections, and they're executing offensively out of timeouts. No matter what it is that we're drawing up as a staff, these guys are executing it, and they have high basketball IQs, and they're playing that way. Of course, we're going to make some mistakes, but what team doesn't make mistakes if you're playing as aggressive as we are? Um, Eichelberger for Millian and Bolton really making one for sport. You know, BC is going to give you a chance to make. Are you finally starting to get some consistent offense? Well, well, I think you know the only thing consistent that we think about every day is defense. You know, that's the one thing that we can show up every day of the week and control how much, how hard, how you know, connected we are defensively and how, you know, we're going to rebound the basketball. We did a good job of, of playing as hard as we can on the defensive end. Now, credit to Robert Morris, they came out offensively. You know, they were, they were clicking on all cylinders, but our guys did not put their heads down. I was extremely excited about our body language, the positive body language during their runs, which allowed us the, the capability of understanding that we're going to bounce back. I mean, it's one of those things where you take two steps forward, three steps back, and you try to get on the run at some point, and our guys did that. We started, you know, I think it was nine straight possessions where we had to stop, three straight kills. That will usually, you know, open up the game a little bit for you. Well, start of the second half, we were very, very focused at halftime because we had we blew a lead in the set in the first half. We were up six. Uh, you know, we allowed some plays to get a, get to us mentally. I think Craig got fouled, and you know, no matter where the ball slipped, and then we gave up a layup that tied the game. I just thought and challenged our guys in terms of our energy. And they, they, they challenged each other. I mean, that's the, at the end of the day, before I even completed a sentence, we overheard them saying, we got to play with more energy than that. We got to duplicate, replicate the energy that we play with um, in DC. And we didn't do that consistently in the first half, but we did it consistently to start the second half. And I think our guys accepted the challenge, 
because Robert Morris came out clicking on all cylinders in the first half, and we challenged ourselves to do the complete opposite, play with more energy than their offense had, and defensively we got the job done. That's what allowed us to get a run. That's what allowed us to get a lead. You said you didn't really live by the score points with your defense. You had a strength seven and nine of guys with turnovers, personal turnovers. Can you talk about that? Well, in terms of having points off turnovers, we try to win a couple areas. I thought, you know, we did that. We won a free throw game, uh, which was very important. We lost the rebounding war, which they won by one, but I was satisfied with where we were throughout the game. Uh, we had 15 assists to 16 turnovers, which is 1.1 to 1 ratio, you know, and that's what we ask guys to do. But I can't, you can't, we can't predict having 12 steals. And our guys did a great job anticipating those steals, getting into the passing lane, and credit our energy level, credit our ability to execute the defensive calls that we were calling. It was an exciting, exciting time, um, you know, throughout the game. It's an exciting way to play. Um, and I, it, it truly takes pressure off our half-court defensive execution. And it allows guys to make mistakes without putting their head down, thinking that it'll cost you the entire game. But it's just those situations where we foul in 90 feet from the basket that I don't like or running out of plays and gambling. We just got to do a better job late in the clock to be able to stop, stop guys uh, defensively. Well, we're going to watch film. Uh, we're going to prepare. We hadn't started watching those guys yet. Uh, you know, we try to win each day. We don't try to get too far ahead of each other or our schedule. We just try to win each day and see where Cleveland State University men's basketball is at. And we'll break down this film, and then we'll start to prepare ourselves for our next opponent. And both teams, our schedule, when has it stopped getting tough? You know, it, it has started that way for the entire year, and our guys are doing a great job. And what I'm impressed about the most is the ability to continue to learn. Our guys are learning each game. They're learning each practice. And they're, they're putting pressure on each other to learn. So it's one thing to have a coach, you know, pushing the, the momentum of practice. But when players do that, that that's a special thing. And, and I really do appreciate the team we, we have built. I appreciate where we are. And we're not satisfied with, you know, our record at all. We just want to play and win each day. And that's what our guys are doing. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it.